Here's what else is not acceptable before I run out of time. Here's another quick note. AB 955, we warned you about this, has passed the Senate, and it's now on the governor's desk. That's the one that's going to potentially increase rates for community college students, four or five-fold, if they take some of these courses. All right, we got Peter Matthews. Professor, thank you for being here. Hello, David Cruz, my friend. I know you've got a busy day today. We've got all kinds of things happening around you. This guy is, uh, you know, we're, <laughs> we're shooting some uh, some stuff on Peter Matthews because we want to see him, not just hear him. Okay, Peter, let me ask you on the shifting American dream because you know that this new study out says young people see a different America from what you and I may have seen. Uh, is this because you teach, you know, kids in this age range? Tell me what you see in your in your courses every day. Is this the new norm? Uh, I would certainly hope it isn't, but it's tough for some young people. Yes, it is. They're starting to lower their expectations, and that's a real shame. But I think most young people understand that we can change this, Dave, if we get together and form ourselves and and create cutting edge new technologies like the Belcon Corporation, which I just met with, the owner of Belcon, that produces electric trucks and buses. We can hire our young people and bring back that American dream once they graduate with degrees. You know, we got a lot of stuff to do, though, to do that. Now, you know, I, I heard about this company, Balcon. Where is it located? It's located in Harbor City. All right. And so they're actually doing electric vehicles, and you've seen them yourself. Absolutely. They started 30 years ago producing electric vehicles for Frito-Lay. Now they're doing it for the harbor. They're producing electric cranes and trucks and tractors and buses also for cities. And it's brilliant. We saw some electric trucks today and got video and talked to the owner about it. Well, Peter, if we can employ kids, maybe it'll change the way they see. But you know what? Now you've touched on something. Maybe because they live in so much of a virtual world, they don't always see the tangibles. Uh, where my parents, they worked in factories, they worked in manufacturing, they could see the product of their hands. What do you think? I think there's, a, there's definitely something to that, Dave. They've got to, to get off of the video games and the virtual world and get into the real world and do, you know, get to be exposed to these things. I want to say something here really important. I had a student this morning in my 9 o'clock class. We were talking about how we can make this economy work and change the world by bringing back the American dream. And he said, you know what, I don't vote. I'm not going to vote because my vote doesn't count. It's only one vote. And you know what else he said to me? He said, you know, if we eventually someone's going to take care of it. It's going to get worse before it gets better, and it'll be taken care of somehow. And I try to maybe bring him into reality that if we don't do something about it, no one else is going to take care of it, and it'll get worse. And don't forget Germany in the 1930s with the hyperinflation, the unemployment. What happened there? Things got a whole lot worse because some guy comes riding in and saying, I'll save you, you know, Hitler. And we can't let that happen. You know, I try to explain to these folks in my classes today about that, and many of them were... I think they were understanding what I was saying, but we have to get involved. Let me ask you one last thing before I lose time with you, and that is AB 955 has moved over to the governor's desk. Yeah. Uh, how, what do you say to that? That's the one about increasing tuitions for community colleges. I think it's this kind of action by politicians that really creates alienation and makes the students give up hope, give up hope and have despair, because now if this thing gets signed by the governor, it's AB 955, they're going to be charging $200 a unit in summer and winter sessions, and that young man is not on vote, he'll say, see why I don't vote? Because if I voted for the governor, many of you did vote for him, he's going to sign this bill, and it's not going to help me. So let's hope that Cherry Brown vetoes this bill, Dave. All right. Well, doctor, thank you very much, Peter. I appreciate it. Look forward to talking to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Peter Matthews, professor of political science at Cypress College, uh, checking in with us because as we go through this conversation about the shifting American dream, it's always interesting to me to see what the academic side of it is like. And the fact is, um, I think it's a combination of all the things. Kids don't see the tangible stuff anymore. It's all in the virtual world. Your voice, K-Talk AM 1150, where listening is a virtue.